Hey there, everybody. In this video, we're going to talk about how to define your client avatar. This is probably one of the most, well, there's a lot of important steps, but this is honestly one of the most important steps in doing any kind of digital marketing, any kind of marketing for that matter. If you want to be more effective with your ads, or more effective with your content, or if you want to reach more customers that are going to be the ideal customer, then you don't want to pass this step. You don't want to skip this step. It's extremely important that you're very, very clear on who it is that you're marketing to and what the messaging should be is going to be built around your client avatar. So this is extremely important. We're going to get into it. We're going to walk step by step how to do this. And if you click the link below, um, I've also embedded a Google Doc that you can get these questions and, and walk through this with me so that you can get more out of your marketing. But by the end of this video, you're going to be able to be very clear on who exactly you're targeting. You're going to be able to hopefully generate two or three client avatars. And then when you do the marketing that you're going to do, whether it's ads or content marketing or video creation, whatever it is that you're doing, it's going to be a lot more effective. Okay, so let's get into today's video. All right, so my name is Brandon Brashears. Thanks for watching this video. I create daily marketing videos here. So if you're looking to grow your brand or your business with digital marketing, be sure to subscribe. Hit that like button if you enjoy the video. And if you have any questions, comment below. Happy to help out with any questions that you might have. Okay, let's talk about client avatars. So you can call them client avatars, client per personas, depending on who you're learning marketing from. They're going to kind of vary that name based on what audience you're talking to, but it's basically the same thing. We're trying to target a specific person or a specific type of person that's going to be your ideal client. Now, this is extremely important because not all clients are created equal, right? You have different people that have different values that are, you know, trying to accomplish different things. They're buying things for different reasons. And so as a result, right, you're going to have clients that are going to be more profitable, you're gonna have clients that are less profitable, you're gonna have clients that are bigger headaches. So how do you define the perfect client? Now I like to go through this exercise and typically I say, okay, think about your you know, two or three best clients that you have. The ones that are a joy to work with, that buy everything that you put out, the people that are really you know, zealous about the content that you have, the, the product that you have out there, who are your true fans, and then we're going to duplicate those people. That should be the goal here. If you're trying to do marketing or you're generating clients and customers, you might as well focus on ones that are going to be profitable and that you're going to enjoy working with. The beauty of being in business is that you get to choose who you want to do business with. And the kinds of content that you put out, the kinds of messaging that you use, the language that you use is going to be able to attract your ideal client and customer. So let's jump into this. This is a series of questions that you should run through so that you can really get clear on exactly who you should be targeting. You can use this demographic data and demographic info in places like Facebook and AdWords and you know apply these filters, these demographic filters to your, your ads and things that you're running. First thing that I like to do is I like to actually name the person that is gonna be the, the avatar. I like to give them a name so that it makes them feel like an actual person. When you're doing digital marketing or any marketing in general, when you're on the internet, sometimes it can feel like you're creating content just for the internet, right? Not for a person. You need to remember that everybody on the internet is a person and it's just a way to reach people at scale. So don't take out that human kind of uh, component there. You need to make sure and give this person a name. So what is their name? Is it Bob the buyer, Sally the seller? You know, what, did, what are you trying to target? Who are you trying to target? Just give them a name so that you can reference them. A lot of times I will actually think of a specific person that I know is kind of like the personified specific person I have in mind is my ideal client when I'm writing emails or when I'm creating ads and I'm going to be using language that's going to really resonate with those people. The, the questions here that we have are age, we have gender, we have marital status, we have education level, do they have kids, do they not have kids, do they have pets, what kind of pets do they have, how many pets do they have, what's their annual income, you know, basically trying to get as detailed as we can about the details that are going to be in this person's life. Who you're targeting is going to make a big difference when you are, you know, attracting a specific type of clients. And if you're creating marketing for somebody who's a single person who has a dog versus a, a stay-at-home mom who has three kids and a dog, they're in very different places in their life, right? And so they have different priorities, different values, and as a result, if you create an ad that is going to appeal to the, the single person who has a dog, it's probably not going to appeal to the person that has three kids and a dog, right? Everybody has different things that they're concerned about. 
you know, timetables and, and time schedules or income levels or disposable income levels or what they're willing to spend money on. So really understanding who is it that we're trying to target, what are their specific demographics that we're trying to target, and that'll help you to define what's going to be important to these people. Try to think about in general, like what are the other, um, if, is there any other important information or demographic data that you can put in there? And if there is, make sure to include that as well. So if you click on the link below, again, I, I listed out these questions so that you can fill this out. It's a, a Google sheet where you can get access to this. And then if you want to duplicate it, um, just hit save a copy and you can use it as much as you'd like to. So the, the first thing that I think we should consider are what are the goals and the values of the people that you're trying to target. The goals would be things like, um, you know, we're trying to, let's say you are a real estate agent and you're going to be targeting people selling houses. For example, if you wanted to have some people's goals would be to sell their house for as much as possible. So obviously most people want that, right? But some people might say, I want to sell it in 30 days or less, right? What is their specific goal? What are they trying to achieve? What will they be able to achieve by working with you? And then they have values, which are different from their goals. So what is important to them on a moral level a lot of times? What is important to them in doing business with you as a professional, right? Some people like to do business with people that have family values or family's important. Um, what makes these people tick and really what's important to them from kind of a, a moral standpoint in general, right? A value is something that, that they believe in and that they like to have that um, you know, reciprocated by the people that they do business with. Typically, you're doing business with people who know, like, and trust you. So a lot of times it's easy to find people who are like you. Those are going to be typically your best clients, people that you could be friends with and things. And so what are the values and the value systems of people that you know? I work with a lot of veterinarians, and so I'll give you a veterinarian example, okay? Really quick here. Um, if somebody is trying to get clients that are really high quality clients that have high compliance, meaning that they do all kinds of services with them anytime they make a recommendation, they say, sounds great, I want the best care for my dog. Somebody who has that, their goal is to have their dog live as happy and healthy of a life as possible. They want to spend as much time with their pet because they love them. They're part of the family, right? And so as a result, their values are very different than somebody who just is coming in because they got a notice from the city, they have to renew their license, and so they need the vaccinations, right? And those person's goal is to get their vaccinations up to date. Um, and so the values are very different, right? The value of somebody who treats their dog like family is that we cherish our pet, um, we think that they add to our life. And so in general, we want to provide, it's important to us that we provide as good as care as possible for our pet, that they live as long and as happy as possible. And um, our value is that we treat our pet like family. So that's very different, right? And, and think about that and don't skimp on this part because this is really gonna help you to construct language that is going to speak to these people. If you, you know, for example, with that pet, if you said, it, like, we'll take care of your fur baby, somebody who doesn't treat their dog like a baby is going to roll their eyes at that, right? So think about, in general, with values, what is the, the main difference? The next thing is sources of information. So who uh, are people that these audience members follow? So, like, if you're a financial planner, for example, and you use systems that are like Dave Ramsey, for example, then Dave Ramsey would be a good person that is going to give advice to your potential clients, right? By the other token, if you have, uh, you know, somebody who, you, let's say you have advice opposite of what Dave Ramsey teaches, right? Then you're not going to want to target people who follow Dave Ramsey. Same thing can go for any business. What kind of books do they read? What kind of magazines do they read? What kind of TV shows do they read? What pages do they follow? What Instagram accounts do they follow? What YouTube channels do they watch? Where are they spending time consuming information and who do they consider to be experts in the industry? You're gonna be able to use a lot of language that's like that. And then you're also gonna have, uh, it's gonna be great because you're gonna be able to kind of pick up off what people have as expectations. I'll give you some examples, like for example, in the real estate business, when I was in real estate, when somebody would start looking for a house, they would start watching um, all of the fix and flip shows on HGTV, right? And so, you know, Property Brothers and um, Chip and Johanna Gaines and all these other people, they would have these expectations based on watching shows and things. It's important to understand typically what mindset they're in because you're gonna have to deal with all of those kind of problems in general um, when you're coming up on that. So it's also good to target different TV shows and uh, different public figures 
in your marketing. You can find people who follow those people. And uh, typically it's pretty good for your targeting, but at least you're gonna have an understanding of what's the information that these people are consuming, what's their mindset, and it helps you with targeting as well. The next is challenges and pain points. With challenges, you, you might think they're the same as pain points, but they're not. So let me give you an example here. The challenges that like a single mother would face is that she is limited on time, um, she is maybe limited on income because she's a single income for her household. She has to do all kinds of jobs, so she's very busy. She's worn out, right? Let's say you want to target somebody who's a single mom and you're, you're trying to sell them convenience, ease of use, maybe fair pricing, something like that, right? That's, that's the challenges that she would be facing, right? Stressed out, worrying a lot. But then the pain points that she has are different than that in that she feels guilty that she has to work and doesn't spend enough time with her kids. Um, same thing for, you know, like you could apply this challenges and pain points to things um, across the board. But typically pain points are those emotional feelings that, that people have because of the situation that they're in. And um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm time strapped as an entrepreneur, right? Um, but that's very different than a pain point of, you know, I feel like I am not spending enough time with my kids and so as a result, I feel super guilty about that, right? And so if you offered a service that was like, hey, we're gonna take and give you more time so that you can spend time with your family instead of doing you know, X task, that's valuable to me because I'm like, hey, my challenge is I don't have enough time. The pain is that I feel guilty because of lack of time, right? So if you have those things, you apply that to the solution that you have. What is the challenge and what is the pain point? A lot of times people will talk about their product and their service in terms of the product and the service, and they won't specifically talk about how it overcomes the challenge and the pain point. So don't forget to poke the bear of, you gotta, you gotta make them feel the pain so that they wanna take action, and pain points are just gold when it comes to that. You know, reminding people of the pain that they feel and how you solve that pain. So that is, in general, a really, really strong marketing point. It's important to understand and get into the, the mind of your clients and customers so that you can understand why they're taking action and, and what it is that they're actually acting upon, not just like, oh, we've been in business 10 years and we offer great service. That's, that's great. That's fantastic. That's not why people are buying from you. They're solving problems that they have and, and they want you to be the solution to it. So that's, that's in general why people buy from you. So don't over complicate things and say, well, they buy because I'm so great. That might be true, but really you're solving a problem for them and it's not just because you're the best, okay? And then the last one is objections and the role in the purchase process. So you want to be targeting typically decision makers. Sometimes, in especially in business to business uh, marketing, you're not going to always be targeting the decision maker. You're gonna be targeting the person doing the research in the decision. So. Make sure that you understand who you're targeting and what they're able to do, what's the appropriate calls to action, what uh, are the ways that you can help them to take action to the next step, especially if they're just in kind of that, uh, that role of, hey, I'm just collecting data right now, and then we'll be making a decision later. I think a lot about in this specific thing, you know, having talked to enough of your customers and your clients, you're gonna know pretty much what the main objections are and, um, making sure that you're framing and positioning the marketing that you do in a way so that you're gonna get the decision makers to be able to make that decision. So obviously as the kind of cost of the transaction goes up, the more that's at stake, the more marketing it's gonna to take to get the sale to happen, typically. And there's always exceptions to the rules. But understand who it is that you're talking to, give them the resources, give them the things that they would want to be able to make that decision. And then you're gonna be a lot more successful. So I hope that this was really helpful for you. I would love to know, you know, what are you working on? Who is your client demographic? Comment below with that. If you need help with anything, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, the next video that I'm gonna be doing, I'm gonna be talking about the before and the after grid and why that is so important to apply. So once you have your client avatar, the next thing that you need to do is figure out the before and after, and then you need to explain how you get your client there. And this is gonna be really, really powerful to help you make your marketing a lot more effective. So be sure to subscribe so that you get that video. If you wanna improve your digital marketing, this is a great channel for you. I make daily digital marketing videos here. So be sure to subscribe, hit that like button. If you have any questions, comment below. I'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.